Hi, Joe here from Kings Road. Um, this morning I'm uh, up at Alan Moore's studio. Uh, you've probably seen in the shop the um, two pieces of artwork we've got on the wall in Woven Sands and um, the lovely hand painted earrings we've got in the store. Um, I come down here and meet Alan fairly regularly um, and there's so much here. I know people have commented on the artwork on the walls um, uh, and I think actually it'd be really nice for you to see a little bit more of his work um, and get a feel for the character of his work and what he does, the wide spectrum of other things that he does um, and maybe have a little conversation with Alan as well, find out a bit more um, about him, the artist. So I'm going to start by showing you some pieces. So it's hard to get a sense of scale here. Um, it's a really big piece of work there. And then we have a really wide variety. We were just having a chat about this, this beautiful piece of work here. A lot of the work you see will be um, paintings, but Alan's also a really prolific sculptor. The light behind me here. I'm going to try and show you some bigger pieces in a second. This is, um, these are two canvases They're painted together as a collaboration. And here's Alan, we're going to bring you round. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> we, um, we have some great chats here. Um, he's got so, lo so much to say and then I think, oh, don't, you know, don't, you know, share it. All the, everything's got a story. I'm going to open this because you can't see through the glass. So we've got some um, jewellery in the shop. Um, try and get the focus on these. And these are some other um, pieces he's created. These are as, some of these are pieces of silver that you've hand hammered, aren't they? Mm -hmm. um, yes. It's difficult to show. It's a little pendant. Tiny piece of gold in that one, I think. Is that the one? Yeah. So you can see um, Alan's got uh, quite a lot of influence of the um, Native American um, yeah, Western American. history, Western American. Um, and you see some, you know, some of the creations. I don't know if you can see this. There's uh, like a profile often. We've got some, it's hard with the glass, I'm just going to open this up so you can see inside. These beautiful small sculptures, and there's always so much detail and mixed fabrics, working with found items, you've got feathers, you've got leather, sand often, paint this as well. Is from uh, Africa. A lot of that black wood is everything. Wow. And you've collected a lot of this on your on your travels. You were talking to me earlier. You had oh, sand from California yeah. and some of it's come from uh, just someone discarded it, threw it on the ground even, and I pick it up. It's a gem. <laughs> it's everything is valuable. It's cherished, things are cherished, and their their intrinsic value remains, and then they are turned into something new. What have you got there? This is a walking stick made up of carved wood. That was a fun piece. Bits and bits of uh, Indian nickel, Indian headed nickel, 1930s. That's a piece of oak. Beautiful old English oak chip. I've got a lot of those. Somebody right. else was discarding it. Everything's got its own story, hasn't it? Yes. It is, yes. It, it's at the moment, it's, uh, it's what I'm doing, and, and nothing else is, is interfering. And the, the beauty of it is, it tells me what to do more than I direct it, it directs me. I put one, one piece 
on whatever it is, paper or canvas, in this case canvas. And then if I like where it is, it directs me then to follow it with balance. To me, it's just balance, not, um, I don't even know if it's a story. I suppose it would be, but I don't know it. I don't know the story. I can't even tell you that one, except that it's a collection of things. There, that's it. One, this one, all these things. They start off as one thing and become another. Mm. Like the feet. <sighs> that's oak and pine and all sorts of paint. And that's a barn owl feather, the most beautiful feather I've ever had the pleasure to use. Some they have, all have silver. This is an inlay. These are inlays of ebony into this oak. That's a Nordic feeling. This is northern, northwest America. More of an Eskimo cold weather. Strong, isn't it? A lot of silver in that and a lot of little tiny things, feathers and stuff. Just uh, occurred to me to put something there. And it grows. It has its own life. Same thing. This this is an old piece of rusty metal that I de-rusted, and then used it as a the face for the sort of a Pachita doll. This is sand painting, which I do a lot. Of. That's the barn owl feather again. Piece of silver. Have to look again. There's an earring. There are earrings on the feet. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> No, nothing is safe. Oh, everything gets worked in. It adds loads of layers of texture and interest. And you can look and look and look and find, you know, something even, even else and everything. That I didn't even know. That's the same feeling. That's some sand painting. It's a prairie desert sort of a thing. A figure, I suppose, if you will. Feathers and... That's one of my favorites. It's nice, isn't it? I don't even think I have a title for it. Somebody help me. <laughs> yeah, any suggestions, welcome. Get in there. We've got the whole corridor of other mm. This is a piece called Audrey. That's my wife's middle name. And it's, it's her, the lady that she is. That we've now been 40 years together. This is done from the air, out of a ketchup bottle. It's never touched. The only touch is the, to paint the, um, the hessian, paint the hessian the gray. And then this, the rest of it is just snapped through the air, and as I curve, it curves. It's an amazing mm. thing that I discovered by accident. Thinking about uh, yeah. a lot of other artists, but this is completely everyone, and it, it's just delightful. And when you stop, it hits a, puts a drop of paint there, exactly in line, because you, as you pull away, it shows another drop. Always like dying, dying the eyes. It happens automatically. This one was fun because I kept it limited. I've got some large, large pieces that are filled with that, but this is my favorite still. And it's an ode to Audrey. Ah. Lindsay Audrey. Give my life meaning. It still does. Some of these are framed. That's a buddy of mine who I um, urged him to come and work, and uh, he's done. This is quite beautiful. Nice colors. This is. But he's um, done some of that in the air thing. He was. Uh, I helped him along a lot. 
This is more similar to the couple of pieces I've got in the shop. There were so many pieces we wanted to bring down, but the space I've got in the shop is quite limited. Um, can't quite see the colours. They're beautiful, soft This tones. represents my love of cities. I grew up in Boston and lived many years in New York. And then I ended up in San Francisco before I came to England. All great cities. That's as well, but looser, softer. This is truly a city. I should step back, get stuff set. Yeah. Look more what it is. This is all very quickly done with pushing and pulling paint so that it, and then sketch in after everything while it's wet. This is on Hessian too. Hessian is great. Yeah, it's quite texture. coarse, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, very coarse. Yeah, you have to work hard too. Even but, when you're wet it, it's still sort of trying to dry and push push away so it's have to flood it with paint. Mm. It's really fun. Yeah, I like I'm that. like a child. I really like that. I do, I do things in a childish way. It suits me. So this Hessian as well, yeah. This is less city, but it's still it's still a ghostly sort of distance city. You can see the the buildings if you look close. If you have a, a strong imagination, yeah. Of course, yeah. But you you do still get that sort of that sensation of the the yeah, lights and the cityscapes and the height. But it has, here has buildings and well, it's very loosely done. It's no particular city, but it would be Midtown, Manhattan, if anything. Most of my cities are on water, because that's what I've experienced in my life. And, uh, either a river or an um, ocean or a bay. So you lived in Boston, Boston? First, yeah, which is on the Charles River, and then also very close to Atlantic. And then New York, which is Hudson more than anything. Either across the Hudson. Uh, the ones in the shop are, are they are they New York? They, yeah. At dark in the nighttime when light, when New York comes alive. It's uh, midnight. You don't even eat dinner till eight. No. Late night. She gets too hungry. <laughs> when they're ready. This is my love, my absolute love of the Western American Indians. Their whole, everything they are, they were. We came in and just took over and put them aside and they are what America truly was. Mm. And I, this is it, this is my tribute to everything that was Western America. And Eastern Indians as well. But I, I concentrated on the West because that's where I found my home, San Francisco area. These are Adrian's, these are a good friend who's a, who's a post, he runs a post office. Uh. He's a postmaster and he loves to paint and he, I think he got the feeling off me about cities and he's, he shames me sometimes. <laughs> I love it. This is that same effect. Yeah. This was done by Adrian under and then I put Put some color in it, threw my paint down, and that's a collaboration. This is the same Western American feeling. Like this is a, I love this one because it's sort of an animal figure in the middle with gold leaf and delicate, but very strong, just small. I love that piece. And the, I like to thread. Yeah. And sit back and walk with the glass. And so that's fun on nice. the paper. This is very true. Cool. Um, somehow the thread is, represents strength. This is a Latin dance. People out there at just the middle of the night carry on and just dancing beautifully and freely. Yeah. Brazilian maybe or, or Cuban. Cuban more, I think, almost animal-like here, but just because it, it needed to be there, I don't know, but I didn't plan it. It just started to come alive. It, it's a night scene with uh, hot music, yeah, S samba, or not samba, even more, a uh, little light here. 
morning coming maybe mm. this is all night is one of my favorites of figures if you call them figures yeah that's sort of an experiment in some sort of plastic uh, product that was very strong I probably inhaled some huh. was in my old studio with Aspen guys this, I've got three or four of them I just while everything was wet I just pull and push with the cards it's not really a brush piece at all and because it was so wet it would pick up and drop the, the big gun what would you call it it's for plastering but like a trowel. This long thin blade mm. pull it push it swing it go away and let it leave it alone this is uh my very strong love for Miro yes that era I think some of these people never could finish. I mean, it, it lives on, but I also I like to carry it on and give them the credit and then add my, my ability to it. So not copying, but the sand painting is a whole bunch of things and also the snapping from the air and some direct contact to little bits and pieces, whatever, it's, whatever I have around. Good, good heavy watercolor paper on the doors. This is another piece that I was hoping to get in the shop, but it's too big for the space yeah. I've got. It would have dominated New York. another New York, New York scene. Night. The Hudson River. My years in New York were not wasted. I learned that I had to leave there. <laughs> <laughs> but that was no reason then just to go to California, I suppose. I spent uh, 1966 through 72 in New York. Moved to Connecticut for a while and then westbound. Never looked back. But New York is with me. It will always be. This is, uh, I think, Adrian Under and my soap over. So I don't know where, again, that throwing the paint down, but also scraping heavily because he, he has texture, heavy, heavy texture. So I've added the upper colors. It's a beautiful piece, I think, in mm. terms of collaboration. He yeah. just leaves them here and I do it. He doesn't watch me. This is paint chips, dried paint chips, acrylic. I can't get far enough away to get this in No, room. it's a problem, yeah. This is I'm just a bit nice. Oh, yeah. Okay. Great colours in there. This is just um, oil. This is all oil paint, these of this time. And while everything's wet, I just keep on putting paint in, pulling it out, push back and forth. A lot of this time with palette, very little brushwork here. Palette knives mostly, or straight edges, business cards, whatever else. Piece of glass with a straight edge. It picks up paint here, say, three, four colors, eight colors, and then put it here. It just, it makes itself. Once the paint's down, then it's loaded to draw paint from at the same time as putting it, or moving it around. So that's been fun. These. I particularly like this one because it's so bold. My greens are greens. The mm. blues, I don't usually do that. I usually mute, but this is not. This is. This demands notice. Yeah. <laughs> Self portrait, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I, who knows? But I wasn't thinking much during this one. Same thing oil paint and then thrown from above. Well, after it's dry. But again, Straight edge palette knife, no uh, no brush. Brush is too uh, not sure. It takes too long to do what a mm. pull with a card can do in one second, and it's clean and smooth, even though it's uh, crazy. This one too, same around the same time, probably a couple of years ago, maybe eighteen. What's that? Going on four years ago, I suppose, three mm. years. 
So I might just wander back down Please. towards the studio. I know I haven't got much um, battery oh, left yeah. on my phone, which is annoying. Um, These are all pla uh, chips, chips and acrylic, and then added whatever, even some brushwork here and there. The backgrounds are brushwork. Oh, oh, oh. I'm just going to let you nosy quickly into the studio. This is where you always want to see where it all happens, where it all goes on. This has been all cleaned up. <laughs> all, all neatened up for your business. Well, everywhere discovering new forgotten artworks and um, little creations and sculptures everywhere. So this is where the magic happens. Usually on the floor, though, you said you prefer to work. Yes, I'll, I'll above it anyway, on a table, but not a, it's not a um, easel kind of thing. I up to. Uh, you don't get enough to, movement, probably, if yeah, you're just. I have, when I stand over something, it uh, lifts me somehow. It, it tells me what to do when I see as a. It's like a wife, <laughs> like a woman that you love so much that whatever she says, yeah, yes, yes, dear. Cool. Well, I'm going to go because I think my battery's going to run out, but um, I hope you really enjoyed that. Um, I hope you do too. Yeah, it's really nice to, to actually show you and a little bit more. thank my dear friend for taking the time. You're welcome. To uh, accent things a bit. Yeah. Well, if you've got any questions or you want to find out um, more or, you know, want to see more details or we've got, um, I think Alan's been creating some images of some of his work. So we can always, um, if you want to either get down here to have a look at things or, um, yeah, see things in more detail, then get in contact. Most welcome. You'd yeah. always be welcome. Makes a pretty good coffee too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks for watching.